Good afternoon, Ridgeline Church family. I hope this video finds you healthy and as well as you can be under the circumstances. Uh, they certainly are <clears throat> crazy circumstances. I doubt that anybody um, could have anticipated that we would be here today talking about the things that we're talking about, but um, we are all adapting and trying to remain flexible during this unprecedented time in the life of our church and in the life of ministry. Um, we've probably never been through anything like this before, and um, it could be that we will never go through something quite like this again. Um, but there are a few positive things that I want to highlight as I go through this video, which we'll introduce and talk about some different ways in which we plan to do ministry over the next 10 to 12 weeks. So hang on for a few minutes. Uh, but one thing about this time is that we live in such a an instant gratification culture that it is incredibly frustrating for many of us to have to anticipate something. We're anticipating uh, the first pitch, or we're anticipating being able to go back to work, or we're anticipating being able to shop or go out with friends or that first birthday party. Uh, and this builds a sense of anticipation and a longing and a hunger and a thirst for something that we would normally take for granted, like the regular gathering of our congregation for worship. Um, that sense of anticipation and longing, um, unfortunately, will build for quite some time before it's a reality. And so I don't want you to be discouraged, but I want to allow, encourage you to allow yourself to build up a hunger and a thirst and a longing. Uh, because these times for our church and ministry, they're just gonna be different. And this reality isn't just for us and our location, but the Church of Jesus Christ is adapting and working and pastors all around the nation are making similar announcements like this and so we just have to understand that ministry is going to happen and ministry is going to continue. Bible studies are going to continue. Um, the preaching of the Bible, teaching, evangelism, the proclamation of the gospel, all of those things are going to continue. They're just going to look different over the next 8 to 10, maybe 12 weeks. And so all of us need to remain flexible and positive. I call that flexitive or possible probably flexitive, yeah, that's probably a better word for it, is to be flexible and positive during this time uh, that we are going to be doing ministry in a different way. And so I just want to uh, clearly announce today that the leadership at Ridgeline has prayerfully, painstakingly accepted the following realities about church ministry going forward. First of all, we will be completely closed for the rest of March. That is, no small groups, no meetings, no rentals, no building activities, uh, limited office hours, mostly officing from home so that we can care for and protect the health of our employees and vendors and people who are regularly in the building. So there, the building will be completely closed and there won't be any ministry activities <clears throat> at all for the month of March. That means that we will be doing online worship for the foreseeable future. There will be no congregational worship according to CDC guidelines and the federal government's guidelines and Governor Wolf's recommendations that no groups of over 50 can meet for about eight weeks. So that puts our next possible congregational worship, unless things change, back to May 17th. Um, so until then, we will be doing online worship. We're going to post sermons and worship songs on our YouTube channel first, and then we'll post links to that on our website and on our Facebook page, not change, page, on our Facebook page. Listen close. If you need to take notes, go ahead and take notes. But our YouTube channel is youtube.com and then search for Ridgeline Church. I think last time I checked, there were four or five Ridgeline Churches, but you'll see Ridgeline Church, it'll have our logo, uh, the red and gray logo, and so that's Ridgeline Church, 
And, uh, and so that's where we will be posting worship songs that you can participate with in family worship, maybe even small group worship uh, a month from now or so. Uh, but also you need to like the Ridgeline Community Church Facebook page. Now that's a public page. Many of you are a part of a Ridgeline plant. It's an unofficial private page, but that's not the same thing. We communicate officially through our Ridgeline Facebook page, which is a public page. So that's how we're going to be worshiping for the foreseeable future. We'll post a sermon online. It'll be available by 1015 Sunday morning. There will also be a few worship songs for you to choose from, for you to do family worship or individual worship or worship in whichever way you are possible. But that'll be important. That'll be a connecting um, sermon for many of us. That will be an opportunity for me to address the specific needs and for the Lord to speak through his word to our individual congregation and how we may serve and uh, some of the stories and needs that are going on within our own congregation will also happen through that. So make sure you tune in for that. So just to recap, building activities all closed through the month of March. We're moving everything to online worship for the foreseeable future. A third announcement update I have is that our budget meetings and the vote have been postponed. In addition to that, we have frozen our operating budget and we have gone back through the budget and now we are cutting expenses dramatically. We are shutting down the building to limit our expenses completely over here. And um, also we wanna encourage you to continue giving. Uh, you can do that through our website, through online giving. Many of you do that already. Uh, a good number of you also give through automated checks that are just automatically mailed to the church. And some of you who are accustomed to giving at church, you can also drop off your checks here at the church office uh, at our mailbox, and we check that uh, frequently. But we want to encourage you, if you're able, to keep giving. Um, a third announcement, in addition to building clothes for March and online worship services and our budget issues, uh, a fourth um, announcement is that it's, it's our hope that we can, while we're shut down, that we can make a lot of progress on the renovations to our building. So while we've shut down our operational budget that we spend out of our receipts and offerings, we hope to open up some of the softball field sale money and then we hope to f just really push the gas down on some of our renovation projects, including the ceiling, uh, the, some of the painting, some of the flooring, uh, the stage, some of the other areas that are going to take place within the church. We were going to have to shut down um, the worship or move worship off-site or rent a tent or something for a period of four to six, maybe eight weeks anyway, so that we could do some of these necessary renovations. But it's our hope that if, if uh, the government opens up some things and that if we're able to safely move about without um, compromising public health and safety, that within a two or three week period, we can start really flooring it when it comes to renovations and some projects that we would like to get done. So that will make May 17th um, even more uh, something special to look forward to is to come together in a renovated and clean, uh, cleaned up facility. We hope that we can get some of these projects finished during the shutdown, and it's at very least we hope that we can make some progress during that. And so that's a prayer request as well. The fifth major announcement that I have uh, today is that we want to care well for each other. We want to be uh, really well, we want to care really well for the people in our church, the people connected to our church, and the people in our community over the next 10 weeks. It's our goal to contact every family and individual that attends this church um, once a week at least over the next 10 weeks. So over the last few days, we've been working really hard to develop a system by which all 85 families and individuals and people who are connected to Ridgeline receive weekly contact and prayer and communication and video and posts and even group prayer or online prayer meetings. Um, we set up a special website 
I mean, sorry, website. We set up a special email address so that you can communicate more efficiently your needs as it relates to the coronavirus and to job situations and to financial situations and for prayer requests. So we've jot down this email address. It's care at ridgeline.cc. That's care at ridgeline.cc. We've also set up a structure by which the staff members and the elders at Ridgeline can um, communicate through some ministry leaders, and those ministry leaders can communicate through a group of partners, and those partners will each have a handful of families that they will check up on. Uh, so we hope to make more intentional, structured, and organized ways in which we are communicating and caring for and praying for and praying with and meeting the needs of the financial needs, the prayer needs, the medical supply needs, the grocery needs, all the needs that we can anticipate meeting over the next 10 weeks. We have put together a system in which we hope to meet those needs really well. Let me close with a couple of uh, challenges that um, are going to take place over the next 10 weeks. Uh, number one, you're going to have a choice to make. You're going to have a lot of choices to make, but let me challenge you in your choice in f uh, three or four key areas. Number one is intake. Uh, over the next 10 weeks, you have the option on what you're going to intake. Uh, you can binge on news and cycles and Facebook and Netflix and panic and all kinds of things like that. You can binge on all that. Um, or you can saturate yourself with scripture. You can saturate yourself with prayer, hope. You can love your neighbor well. You can, you can come out of this 10 weeks with a much stronger faith in Jesus Christ and a much more solid foundation of walking with him and knowing him personally. And that's only going to be related to the amount of intake that you receive. So if you're going to binge on Netflix and video games and movies and, and series and, and TV shows and, and news cycles and all those kinds of things, um, that will not develop within you a stronger walk with Jesus if you had chosen to saturate yourself with Scripture. Some of you are going to have more time on your hands. Uh, you could double or triple the amount of scripture that you read and meditate on and memorize and focus on. You're going to have a choice on what intake there is for you. So my challenge is for you to watch your intake. Jesus said as the eyes of the uh, are the lamp of the body, so uh, also what you receive is going to dictate what is produced within you. And so I hope that you'll saturate yourself with scripture. A second challenge I have for you, a choice that you can make is what you do with ministry. Over the next 10 weeks, you're going to have a choice in how much you allow your light to shine in the darkness. Um, your friends, your neighbors, your family members, your co-workers, people all around you are going to go through various um, cycles of anxiety and fear and depression and good times as well, uh, worry and stress. Uh, you have an opportunity to do ministry in a way that uh, windows are going to be open that weren't open before and to people's lives. And so you're going to have a chance to minister to people really well during this time. And so I want to challenge you not to shrink back from ministry in your church and not to shrink back from ministry in your community. A third challenge I want to give to you today is I want you to fight. All right, so I want you to watch your intake. I want you to do ministry and not shrink back from it. And the third thing I want you to do is to fight. I want you to fight against fear, fight against isolation, fight against impatience. I want you to fight to maintain relationships with your family and friends. This is a good time for you to nurture relationships that are important to you. Uh, and so I want to encourage you to do that. I want you to fight against temptation toward addiction and destructive behaviors. I want you to fight uh, to comply and to cooperate with your local authorities with our state leaders and our federal or, or government leaders. Review Romans 13. We have an obligation to obey the leaders that God has put um, over us. I want you to fight to be a good neighbor. So I don't want you to spread uh, this um, virus around. I want you to be um, responsible in the way in which you go out and the way in which 
you um, operate in our community because there are many people in our community who are very uh, vulnerable to this uh, coronavirus. And so you may not be afraid that you get it, but um, my biggest fear when I traveled to Oklahoma was not that I would catch the virus, um, but that I would spread it and that maybe someone in my family uh, would be affected uh, negatively by this disease and that it would have been my responsibility because I was flippant in the way that I was um, walking in the community. So I want you to, um, to fight. I want you to fight for those kinds of things. Uh, and then the last thing I want to say as I close this really probably too long of a video is to keep in mind that everything I'm saying right now could change in two weeks. <laughs> I mean, honestly, two weeks ago, we were in a totally different place. Two days ago, we were in a different place. Um, and so information is new and incoming and everybody has to maintain flexibility. And so just understand that some of the things I'm saying now, um, we're going to have to adapt and change and, and alter our strategies and our uh, ministry plans. So just be flexible and stay um, in tune and in touch. Well, let me pray for you. Uh, let me pray for our church and let me encourage you to tune in on Sunday morning for a special sermon and worship service as best as we can. Lord Jesus, we understand that this did not take you by surprise. We understand that you are sovereign over all things, that you uh, were in no way uh, surprised by what's taking place in the world. And we thank you that we don't have to fear. You did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but a, a spirit of power, love, and self-control. And so I thank you that your children of all peoples should be the most at peace, the, less, the least anxious, and the least worried, understanding that you hold all of our lives in your hands. I pray that you would help us to do all we can um, to develop and strengthen our relationship with you and our faith in you during this time. We pray that you would strengthen our church. We pray that uh, for the health and safety of those whom we worship with and for the health and safety of our friends and family members as well. Let this be a time when our prayer lives increase dramatically, where our scripture intake increases dramatically, and when our faith in you at the end of this 10 or 12 week period, where we are walking much more closely with you. We thank you for the challenges that we're gonna face and the obstacles that we're gonna face over the next few months. We pray that you would help us and strengthen us to rise up to meet the challenge. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hey, God bless you and um, keep in touch and look forward to uh, communicating other ministry opportunities with you over the next few weeks. God bless.